Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. What will the future look like? I mean, really look like? That's the question that I began to ask myself as I was watching the new Star Trek series Picard, which takes place in the 24th century. So far, the plot of the show revolves around a synthetic uprising against the humans they were working for. In the Picard universe, synthetics are far advanced. They seem almost human and can perform almost any job a human can. Which made me think of Andrew Yang, a politician who was sent from the future to warn us about the threat that AI will one day pose to the human race. You know, robot trucks, great for GDP, terrible for many, many American communities. And he and his eponymous gang seem to believe that the dawn of mass unemployment is upon us, thus necessitating a universal basic income, or UBI. So. Is it true that robots are coming to steal our jobs? Thus causing a chain of events that will see humans end up in mass prisons where we will be forced to take happy pills and have sex with Roombas which will lead to a population of servile cleaning human robot hybrids that will slave away for the benefit of glorious robot emperor Steve Jobs who lives in the cloud city in the sky where he and his army feast on human skins? Well, that's the question we're gonna ask in today's video. Now, keep in mind, we are not really going to discuss how close we are to so-called sentient AI. We've done videos on stuff like that before. Sentient robots are rather far off, most likely, and sentience is rather hard to define anyway. No one really knows when the world might actually see a chappy or synthetics like data in Star Trek. What we want to focus on is automation and the practical roles that robots will serve in in the future. Anyway, in 2017, McKinsey Global Institute reported that 73 million U.S. jobs could be lost to automation by just 2030. Also, at the end of last year, Heward Smith of Forrester, an American tech research company, told Fortune that 73% of all cubicle jobs would be gone by 2030. Then, an Oxford economics report, also from last year, predicted that 20 million manufacturing jobs around the world would be lost by 2030. Of course, AI and robots are the root cause of a lot of the job loss. According to a 2018 briefing by McKinsey, the jobs that, quote, include physical activities in highly predictable and structured environments, as well as data collection and data processing, end quote, are the ones most at risk for being eliminated. Basically, the simpler or more repetitive your job is, the more likely you are to lose it to automation. McKinsey estimated that about 5% of occupations are susceptible to being fully automated given current technology, but that a significant portion of most jobs can be automated. Thus, the nature of jobs in almost every sector will change to a degree. And while this might make life easier for some workers, for others, it could leave them without full-time work. For myself, I'm not really sure. I'm a YouTuber. I don't really think I'll lose my job to an algorithm, but even now, I pray and sacrifice baby sheep to one. In all, McKinsey predicts that 15% of the global workforce, which amounts to some 400 million jobs, could be displaced by automation by 2030. And as they state, that's a midpoint estimate. In 2017, researchers at the Future of Humanity Institute at the University of Oxford asked AI experts about the future of artificial intelligence, and most of their respondents predicted that AI would be able to outperform humans in translating languages, writing high school essays, and driving trucks within the next 10 years. So sorry to millennials, you were probably one generation or two generations too late. You had to either write your own essays or beat the crap out of a nerdy kid and make him do it for you, both absolutely strenuous tasks. And we're definitely at the tail end of traveling around the world without being able to understand what the hell people are saying. I mean, I can already use Google Translate speaker function to communicate rather seamlessly with people anywhere I go. Just recently, I was in South Korea and was able to have a full-on conversation with my cab driver about baseball, despite neither of us speaking more than a few words in the other's native language. And then we have truck driving. The job at the core of the American soul will perhaps one day become automated as well. Which obviously means we will no longer be able to easily pinpoint the people most likely to be serial killer rapists. Most of the experts in the Oxford study also think there's a 50% chance that AI will outperform humans in everything within the next 45 years. So, what am I getting at here? Is it all doom and gloom? Well, no. The McKinsey report predicts that while AI will steal a lot of jobs, it will also create a lot of jobs. 
McKinsey predicts that new technology such as automation itself and new sectors could create between 555 million and 890 million jobs between now and 2030, which more than offsets the number of jobs that are predicted to be lost. It should be noted that it sounds to me that all these estimates, both about jobs being lost and jobs being gained, are really loose estimates, and nobody knows for sure what the net gain or loss will be. But no matter what, even if there's a net gain in jobs, it doesn't mean that there's absolutely nothing to fear, because the skills that people have will still need to change. McKinsey predicts that as the demand for physical and manual skills decline in the near future, the demand for technological and digital skills will increase rapidly, as will the demand for more intelligent workers with better social, emotional, and cognitive skills. There will be an increasing premium on creative and critical thinkers. Simply said, learn to code. The transition that will be required of today's workers in order to adapt to the very near future economy will be very challenging. We aren't talking about centuries into the future here, but just a decade. Current workers are going to need to be retrained and shifted to other professions, and companies are already preparing for this shift. Amazon gets a lot of heat for some of their labor practices, and to be fair, my friend who works for them did almost die after being forced to test their new 5-minute delivery teleportation machine. He is pretty much fine, though his legs just melted. But to Amazon's credit, last year they announced that they would spend $700 million over the next six years to retrain a third of its U.S. workforce in preparation for the changing economy. So even if new jobs are created by automation, there will likely still be mass unemployment if people just sit still. Today's workers can best prepare themselves for the future by constantly learning new skills, especially those that are applicable to the changes one's company is making. Let's say you're working in a warehouse packing products by hand, and your company brings in machines that can pack the products for you, then it seems like a smart way to go would be to learn how to operate the machines with expertise, or better yet, if you can, go get retrained and learn how to build and repair these machines. Now this all said, in say, Captain Picard's time, it is possible that robots will have become so advanced that almost all jobs are eliminated, and in such a case, a universal basic income would be needed. And hey, please keep in mind that the stats I'm presenting in this video have to do with the very, very near future, 2030 or so. The ugly truth is that nobody really has any idea what the next 50, 100 years will bring. UBI may very well one day become necessary, but for now, it remains a pipe dream and enormously expensive. According to the Wharton Public Policy Initiative at UPenn, former Democratic presidential nominee Andrew Yang's plan to give $1,000 a month to American citizens would cost almost $3 trillion a year, about three quarters of the federal budget, a cost that Yang claims could be offset by a VAT tax, hundreds of billions of dollars in welfare cuts, and the economic growth that would result from UBI. As you might have already ascertained, time traveler Yang's plan is extremely optimistic and would be nearly impossible to pass, especially with all the welfare cuts it requires. Still, as I said, there might come a day further into the future than 2030 when we need UBI. So while the short-term future will most likely see people shifting from certain types of jobs to others, such as from building the cars to operating the machines that build the cars, in the very long term, it seems logical to me that people won't be employed as much or will have more opportunities to pursue their passions. It's really hard to predict because the world could experience major changes in the future that spur the creation of unforeseen jobs or destroy everything and everybody by way of nuclear winter. Either way sounds exciting to me. And hey, just because a job is rendered unnecessary for humans to do doesn't necessarily mean it will be eliminated. In Star Trek, we still see people doing some jobs that robots might be able to do in the future, like working a front desk. But sometimes you can't beat human interaction. I kind of feel guilty every time I'm in a store and I bypass the human clerk to check out using the automated systems when they're available. I know that every time I hit that checkout button on the screen, I'm starting a chain of events that eventually will kill a Walmart employee. But I do it anyways because I feel nothing inside. So maybe the next time you're in a store with the self-checkout computers, go up to the checkout counter, look into the clerk's eyes, and say, I got your back today, Karen, because f robots. But yeah, robots are going to change the way that we go about the world. Literally. 
After all, many companies are working on developing self-driving cars. But as Brian Reimer, a research scientist in the MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics, told Business Insider last year, while a lot of people might believe that fully self-driving cars are available for purchase today, thanks to misleading statements on the part of entrepreneurs like Elon Musk, the systems in such vehicles are only meant to assist a driver and not act on its own. As Greg McGuire, associate director of M-City, a 32-acre mock city and proving ground on the University of Michigan's campus that is dedicated to the development and testing of driverless cars, told Business Insider, we are still a ways off from a car that can truly make its own decisions. I mean, self-driving cars have to be perfect, right? It can't be like, well, it only veered onto the left side of the highway once today, so not bad. So truck driver jobs, especially because they require much more than just driving, are likely not going to completely disappear anytime soon. Still, the trend does seem to be towards autonomous vehicles, and in the future, such will probably become an option in planes, trains, and automobiles. However, as Dirk Whistleman, a senior engineer in automated driving at BMW, told Business Insider in a separate article back in 2018, quote, in 50 years time, I think we will see very diverse mobility. We will have autonomous cars, and I think we will still have manual driven cars because I think it's really the choice of the customer. For safety reasons, we will make the conventional cars also very safe. It's not necessary that we really need completely autonomous driving, only driven, by safety, end quote. Yeah, I mean, people choose to buy boats and private planes today just for the enjoyment of driving and piloting them. I don't see why people wouldn't still want to drive cars in the future. But no doubt that all trends point towards a much safer future, and robots are already leading the way in increasing safety and eliminating mistakes, whether in driving or medicine. In 2017, a study performed by Massachusetts General Hospital, Harvard Medical School, and MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory showed that an artificial intelligence system they developed was more efficient than radiologists at detecting high-risk cancer lesions that need surgery. Additionally, just a few weeks ago, Britain's National Health Service announced that a robot capable of minimal invasive surgeries would begin to work in NHS hospitals. However, we are still very far away from robot doctors that can operate on their own. Additionally, as an article on the Brookings Institution's website points out, a major challenge in developing AI that can perform medical duties and identify diseases is that human doctors often use their intuition to identify sick patients that might not appear sick or display markers that would lead a computer to conclude that the person is sick. Again, this goes back to the obstacle of getting robots to think like humans and be able to reach a level of awareness where we might call them sentient. In general though, in the future, AI algorithms will do a whole lot more than demonetize this video. They will constantly be predicting things around us, from sickness to market crashes to climate change. The robots and AI we see in the future are less likely to rise up against humans and are more likely to make things easier for humans while changing the nature of the economy and jobs. Far off into the future, people may very well not be required to do many jobs, especially the crappy ones, and robots will fill in everywhere from performing surgery to flying planes to predicting the weather to fighting space wars, which is going to be awesome. But unless we hit some breakthrough in technology, it's also likely that wherever robots are in action, so too will humans be guiding them and making the ultimate decisions about how to proceed with tasks. Long story short, a computer in the future might be able to operate the Enterprise, but Captain Picard will still be needed on board to make sure that things are running smoothly and to offer professional support to his female colleagues. Anyway, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a like. Comment down below as well. Let me know what you think about the video, what you think about the future of automation. Maybe you think that everything I just said was absolutely correct. Maybe you thought it was all absolutely idiotic. Maybe you didn't like the fact that I brushed aside the threat of future robot uprising. Whatever it is, go ahead and participate. I wanna hear what you have to say. I appreciate you, man. Anyways, for now, remember to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. My name is American Ben and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.